I've owned and ridden a motorcycle all of my adult life, ever since high school and college. After retiring and moving to Southern Oregon, I discovered hundreds of miles of dirt and gravel roads beckoning me right out of my back door. I had enjoyed my Honda Shadow Spirit VT750 road bike for many years, but what I needed here was a bike that could handle the rugged gravel and dirt roads as well as the pavement. Being a retired senior, I was also interested in going on longer trips and I envisioned traveling more of the Pacific Northwest on a motorcycle. When the Yamaha Tenere 700 became available in the United States, I decided to sell my Honda Shadow and jump into the world of adventure motorcycles. I placed an order with my local Yamaha dealer in December, and five months later I got a phone call that my black matte Yamaha Tenere 700 was waiting for me. I'd spent much of the five months during COVID watching videos about the Yamaha Tenere 700 and adventure bikes in general, in some ways brought more questions than answers to me. I was especially concerned over my lack of experience riding off the tarmac, the weight and size of adventure motorcycles, the height of the touring seat, and the uh, top heaviness of most of the motorcycles, and also my desire to travel and explore mostly as a solo motorcyclist. I've only had my Yamaha Tenere 700, for which I've named the Nomad, uh, for a little more than a month as I work through some of my trepidations. Please join me if you'd like to hear my journey as a retired senior transitioning from a life of riding a cruiser motorcycle to learning how to safely enjoy an adventure bike lifestyle. I bought my Yamaha Tenere 700, having never ever seen one or ridden one. Because of COVID-19, no dealers that I checked with had a Tenere 700 in their showroom. Most buyers, like me, would place an order, having never seen one, and a few months later they would pick up their bike. The T7 appealed to me because it wasn't a large, heavy, road-oriented adventure bike. I was interested in an adventure bike that would be lighter and more nimble, where I could ride gravel and dirt roads, as well as on the pavement. You know, I've been riding a uh, 750cc motorcycle for many years, so the T7 seemed like it had enough power to occasionally ride on the freeway and plenty of power for dirt and gravel roads. Plus, it was only $10,000. I trailered the T7 back from the dealer to my house and I unloaded it. The bike had zero miles on the odometer. I sat on the seat and within seconds the bike was lying on top of me in the driveway. I hadn't even started it up. My fears had come true. I pulled myself out from underneath the T7. I probably said too many swear words, but I went to the job of lifting the 450 pound brand new motorcycle back up on a stand. This is where I learned the reality of owning and operating a relatively heavy motorcycle for a senior citizen with a slight build. Fortunately, I had watched a few videos on how to lift up a motorcycle. and After much effort and grunting, I was able to stand the T7 back up. Unfortunately, the plastic side panel got crushed and some paint received some minor scratches. Although I've owned motorcycles for probably 50 years, I'm the first to admit that I'm not an expert rider. I only ride maybe 2,000 miles a year, and I have much to learn. Undeterred, I decided to take the Nomad on its first ride. The first thing I noticed was my feet were not flat on the ground, and that was discerning for me. I eased the T7 out of first gear, and the Nomad lurched forward. I remember that I had seen on a few videos that first gear will pop you forward pretty quickly. I wanted to ride on some paved roads that didn't see much traffic as this was my first ride on the bike. I was wearing new riding boots and having difficulty shifting, especially between 
third and fourth gear. Wasn't sure whether it was the T7 uh, or it was my boots. And after testing, I discovered that my boots need to be placed in a perfect position to shift gears on a T7. I'm still practicing uh, shifting with the boots and I'm a bit frustrated with it. Wearing work boots, I have no problem shifting gears. After a few short rides on pavement, I decided to take the Nomad up a dirt and gravel road on a loop ride. The bike handled well, and I didn't go fast, but there were some tricky areas and I was able to stand on the foot pegs, and I felt the T7 was in its element. I was very much enjoying the ride, and I stopped for a snack, and when I went back to get on the bike, the bike once again was off center and the T7 went over. There I was, off in the woods, out of cell phone range, and away from any other human being with a 450 pound bike on its side. I must admit that I was a bit concerned as it was five o'clock at night. I grunted and I heaved at the handlebars and what seemed like a thousand pounds, I was able to lift up the bike with a little bit of momentum, enough to stand the bike up after a few tries. I realized that part of my problem was not being able to plant my feet on the ground, especially on uneven surfaces. I decided that I would need to buy lowering links to bring the seat height down an inch or two. I decided to buy Supi's adjustable links. The price was reasonable compared to other links, and they appeared very strong and I could adjust the rear suspension up to four inches if I wanted. Installing the links was pretty straightforward and I settled on dropping the suspension about an inch and a half. Next I lowered the front forks about three quarters of an inch. I went on a ride and it seemed much more comfortable. The bike was balanced and I could put both feet flat on the ground. Being a newbie to adventure bike riding, I'm still not sure why Yamaha insisted on making the standard seat height so high. I also realize there's some discussion and some opinions on whether you should lower uh, a bike like the Yamaha T7 or not. I decided that it was best for my riding ability. I plan on taking some lessons and also joining some group rides that'll help me develop more confidence and skills in riding and maneuvering the T7. I've purchased uh, additional safety equipment such as crash bars, satellite communicator, GPS, tire change tools, portable jack, and I've also accumulated pannier racks and luggage for my T7. I'm satisfied with much of the stock features on the T7 such as the bash plate, the guards, and the kickstand. I'll discuss my choices uh, for gear and reasoning in a future video. One thing I have discovered is a $10 piece of equipment that helps an old, slender, senior citizen like me pick up a 450-pound motorcycle with no assistance. Be sure to watch that video if you're struggling to wrestle with your beast. enjoyed the video if you did please give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of my adventures including adventures with my Tenere 700 please subscribe and I'll see you next time on one of my senior moments